All right, welcome to the build, Pascacho. Since people are starting to get their tanks in the mail now, I figured I'd go ahead and throw a build video up and show you how I do it. And sort of give you some tips, tricks, maybe some of the stuff that I've figured out in messing with them for the past, I don't know, however long that works for me. Um, but keep in mind, this is just my technique. Doesn't mean it'll work for you. So, um, play with it man and just see what you can do um, it's a 22 millimeter build deck so um, throw your go-to 22 millimeter build in it if there's any you know question as to what you should do start with that and go from there um, so what you can see in front of you right there is um, a mod a tank some wire and some juice some simple tools I have let over here to the side I've got uh, my screwdrivers and mandrels and wire cutters and scissors and whatnot and cotton so your typical build stuff that you get get all that stuff out um, so let's get right down to it the juice out of the way the mod out of the way for the moment the wire out of the way and we got the deck so what you have here is a 30 millimeter tank I'm gonna get my light set here maybe it'll I'll burn the shit out of myself. Go a little bit, play with it here. Alright, so when it comes to you, it's obviously going to be in the tube. And it's going to have an extra glass with it. And that's the shorty mode. If you want to call it that, it'll hold four mils. The way you see it right here holds ten, and it's pretty straightforward. You got a five ten on the bottom, your airflow fill hole, top cap, chimney tube, chimney cap, chimney sleeve, trip top. So to break it down, just unscrew it. If it's it may be a little tight, but it should break break free no problem. top cap it has an o-ring in it you can see that there set that to the side there's your tank section chimney tube chimney cap chimney sleeve And you're left with your build deck. See, four holes, juice flow channels in the sides come up through the well. And you've got your your well, so it's pretty much just a dripper deck. First one that I know of in this configuration. Um, I can't remember the exact time, date that I threw this thing up the first time when I got my hands. I do know I got my hands on my prototypes the night before it was a Friday night Thursday night Thursday night of ECC this year so that was when this one came when I got finally got my hands on my prototypes for this um, it had been in the works for a couple of months before that so there's that you can see a hole across the the post in the bottom that is originally for the bottom fed version of the 22 and the 30 millimeter 510 drippers but it works pretty good in this application to cross feed between the two wells the, the space between the posts tends to get blocked with uh, wick and that little cross hole down there helps to feed between the two you'll notice that when you set it up not all four juice uh, flow channels will will release your bubble your juice flow bubble which is normal I mean as long as one of them is breathing the tanks feeding so you got your post screws here these are two and a half millimeter post screws which is allows for a two and a half millimeter through hole through each post 
So we'll start by backing those off and make room for our wick. And I'm going to walk you through my entire build process here. I know some people ask, um, or I get asked sometimes how I go about building. So I'm going to walk you through my whole process. And I'm going to get my little build platform here. Don't ask me what it is because I don't remember. Then always, oh, yes, I do. It's the natural. Remember that thing? Side fire. All the sections are gone. Don't know what happened to them, but that'll help me hold on to it while I build. I'm going to get my wire out here. Crack open a fresh pack of this atomic wire. 24 gauge. And my go to build is a parallel 24. 4 5 wrap around somewhere near a three, three and a half millimeter. Let's see if I can find the end of this wire and I can get going with it. So the way I usually, let me set that to the side. The way I usually measure my wire, not that it really matters, but I said I'd walk you through the whole process, so here it is. I just pull off one coil. Like so. That's gonna be one, one side of my build. If I can get this wire to cooperate now that I'm on camera trying to do it. is going to be the other side of my build. Fold my wire in half. Sort of get a middle point. And there's my parallel strands. Same with the other side. Right in the middle. And if I go off camera, it's because I'm watching what I'm doing and not the camera so bear with me and there's the other side so we'll set those to the side for now and I have a build mandrel here and you can use your favorite micro screwdriver this just helps me keep everything nice now the way I tend to I do my, my wrap spaced so I start right up next to my shoulder and if you're using a micro screwdriver, I prefer this style because it gives you a nice shoulder here to work against. And I apologize if my camera's blown out, but it seems to be either one way or the other. So it gives me a shoulder to work against right there. So I usually start and I burn my first wrap so I don't even worry about the first one. So I'm going to start here. So that's one, two, three, four. One more tool that's essential for pretty much any builder. I use my Gerber dime, but any pair of small pliers will work just fine. So I've got my, actually I have five wraps on here. One, two, three, four, five. But like I said, I burned my first wrap. So I basically just unroll that one. And I have my build. Next step is I slam it all together. Nice and tight. And then let it go. And there's my perfectly spaced parallel. Now, here's where opinions are going to differ. You see my over wrap is to the right because of the way I wrap overhand. 
um, my over wrap always ends up to the right hand side and that's usually the side I put through my negative a lot of some people wrap different um, that helps me to keep the negative out of the way when I'm wicking you'll see what I mean when I get ready well, when I get to that point again this is going to be a little bit twitchy for you guys to try to keep up with on the feed here but there we go if it helps reverse the direction of your mandal and I like to slam my positive lead all the way up against the deck Let's see if I can get it in there for you guys see I slam my positive all the way up against and then I tighten it down and don't be afraid to crank on these screws try not to let your screwdriver slip in the head but don't be afraid to bottom them right out you may need to fiddle with it a little bit I like to get my coil centered over my airflow as best I can uh, sometimes it helps to take a flathead and slide these negatives over a little bit just to get them over there out of the way right down on the deck see that just slam it right down the deck I'm gonna tighten my negative Once that's tight, you get a little bit more control over how everything's going to work. Roll it away. When I'm pulling, I don't, I don't just pull. I sort of roll as I'm as I'm I'm pulling to try to sort of unroll it from the positive, and that looks pretty good. I may need to do a little bit of tweak and fine tuning everything spaced nice and even and get the coil as centered as I can get it over my airflow and that looks pretty good and you see now that even though I slammed it right down against the deck it's up and it looks like it's might it might be just a little bit point it up I try to keep it as as horizontal as possible and there you can see I'm I'm up off the deck just a little bit now the further you move this coil away from the airflow the looser your draw will be and then only I'm not talking about craziness like a AFC type open but you can control your airflow to a point by how close your coil is to your deck and you see I'm sort of centered as I can get the goal is to get the air to split and come up each side of your coil so that you get an even airflow across the whole coil instead of all on the outside turn it this way so I can point you don't want it to come up all on the outside you don't want it to come up too far on the inside you want it to try to you want it to hit your coil and split and some of it come up the outside and some of it come up the inside and it will prolong the life of your build if that happens if you can get that dialed in I like to trim my leads as close as possible right up against the positive block there same with my negative leads I've sort of sprung these snips and I might have to do it the old-fashioned way if I can get it there we go shoot wire everywhere once I've done that I like to push my tails up into those post holes 
just because it makes it easier to wick if they're out of the way. See that? Completely flush. And we get to do the other side now. Do it the same way. Take your water. squeeze them together let them spring back and perfectly spaced coil and whether I'm doing a parallel triple single doesn't matter I always do it the same way I space them pretty wide uh, let's see I, I, I space my wraps really wide and then I squeeze them together the spring back in the wire which is natural to the wire is gonna push them back out and they're gonna be much more even doing it that way than if I tried to wrap them that way. I know you can wrap on screws and other things, but that's the easiest way, works best for me. So that's the way I tend to stick to it. Now, if you notice, my coil is directly in the way of my positive post hole for the other side. So what I do is I pre-cut that side and I've done it enough to where I kind of know where to cut it. And I've got maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch from the, from the coil out. Reverse my mandrel here. Feed my negatives through, feed my positives through, and if I've done everything right, I should try to see if I can get it to show on camera here. Just see those you can just see those wires sticking through right there. See them? right there and that's what we want I'm gonna tighten it positive time we'll commence to futzen with our coil that's right I said futzen the guys that build on camera my hat's off to you sir or madam because it is not that easy I'm used to having this about six to eight inches away from my face when I'm doing this so I can see what I'm doing I can get in there good I'm working at arm's length here it's not the easiest thing in the world Here over top of my airflow. How do we do? Even? Looks pretty good. We'll get rid of these right here. Hopefully. And that one, those ended up a little bit longer than the first side because. There's a coil in the way. Either way, I tend to stand them up as best I can and get them as close to that post as possible without shoving a screwdriver through my hand. There we go. 
you know, they're up and as out of the way as they can be. Ideally, they would fall right inside that post hole there. Just bump the camera. I'm gonna try to get those tails to just go inside that post hole. And we'll fiddle with these coils a little bit over here. Try to get them nice and even like the other side. I think we might have it. Let's get us a battery. Let's see how we did. Take it off a little deck holder here. fell off just drop that back on there if you notice the o-ring sits into inside a groove right down here that a lot that groove allows the o-ring to all but disappear into the deck when your tank is on so you don't have to look at any ugly o-rings I clean the outside of this thing for you guys, but I've been trying to get this video up for a couple of weeks now, and when I grab this copper out there, I'm not going to worry about the, I'm just going to make the outside somewhat, my drill's dead, it's all, yeah, it's in a sad shape. As soon as my battery's charged, we'll get it straightened out and see how we did and get it to where you can see it here. And it's pulsing just like always. I'm actually going to kill this main light and see what happens. Alright. Oh, I got some hot legs going on there. Pulse those right out. You'll see me fiddling with my coils here. That doesn't necessarily mean I want the individual wires. Let's bring up my light to come back on without moving. Doesn't necessarily mean I want the individual wires to be spaced. What if I can go in? I don't necessarily want the individual wires here to be spaced. I want each pair of wires, each pair of, of wraps to be spaced. But you also don't want a hot spot. So I just I take my tiniest micro screwdriver and I separate each strand mm -hmm. and then I go back and I try to get each uh, each one back together. I don't want them to be sort of fused, defiant and Atomic and G-plat um, Royal they tend to hot spot together when you're first pulsing them in And you don't want that it leads to a, a hotter area of your build And in all honesty, it'll never get that hot if it does you've got problems Your cool should never glow but you do want it to glow evenly on both sides. A lot of you guys are going to be sitting there pulling your hair out because you're like, yeah, I know this. Get to the point. Get to the point. All right, so wicking. Wicking is probably the, let's see if we can go back out here, the biggest thing when it comes to the tank. <clears throat> you 
there's a method. I'm not saying my method's the best, works for me, it may not work for you, but here's how I do it anyway. So always stick with what you know, and uh, once you find a method that works for you, stick to it. I'll set that over there. I'm gonna get out a pad of Japanese cotton. And I'm gonna probably r ramble on about why I like this stuff better than some other cottons, like the bacons and the, the pad cotton, or the, the roll cotton. These are pretty much all always the same size. All right. Within reason, they're all pretty much this size. It's incredibly easy for me to control how much cotton I'm putting in a coil when I'm using this stuff. First thing I do is I split it. And I split it this way. Just like that. And it may or may not be even, doesn't matter. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with this side. I tend to gravitate towards the, th the thinner of the two. And then I'll get rid of all this fuzzy stuff. Doesn't really hurt anything, but it you know, tweaks my minor OCD a little bit. And we'll get this out of the way. Now I've got sort of half a pad of Jap cotton. That's going to be enough for me to do my entire build. Next thing I do is I split it down the middle lengthwise. And now we have our two sides. So we'll lay one to the side. Next step, roll it up. Now, it, while I'm doing this, if I can do this and talk at the same time, I'm gonna try to do that. Fresh build taste. I know everybody knows what I'm talking about. When you first, when you put a fresh wick in, it's got a distinct flavor. More often than not, that flavor goes away pretty quick. But, if you want to ink, decrease the time it takes for that to go away or eliminate it all together your very first step before you go messing with any wick is going to be to wash your hands washing your hands will remove any dirt and oils that may be on your skin this gets transferred to your wick while you're doing this step which then causes the quote unquote fresh build taste and you'll see my fingers all over this wick right now I mean I did wash my hands but as a general rule you want to handle your wick as little as possible at least I do anyway and this is sort of a step I've taken from trying to figure out how to build with stainless steel mesh. When you get that stuff, you roll it up similar to this, and then you just keep rolling it and it'll keep tightening itself. And I'm putting very little pressure on the wick. It's more just enough to, to hold it between my fingers and get it to roll. And I'm rolling it, if you can see the tail, the, the direction I've rolled it, this way will tighten it. So that would be counterclockwise. If you're looking at it that way, and clockwise if you're looking at it that way. Makes sense? Good. And once I've got it to the point where it's not super tight, but it's holding its shape well, and there's no sort of hole in the middle, it doesn't look loose, I unroll it enough to where I can get a handle on it. about that then I hold it up and see how much I'm going to need so I gauge against my coil and 
that looks to be pretty close. Let me trim that off. And since I know both of these wicks will come from the same thickness of pad, I know I should have to cut about that much off of that piece over there to do the other side. Once I know I've got the right size wick, I roll one end extremely tight. This will be the end I put through the coil. Slap it through, pull it through. Don't want it too tight, don't want it too loose. As you can see there, it's there's a little bit of drag, but it's not a ton. Right? And there we have it wicked. When I trim my wick to length, I lay my scissors, and this part is going to be hard for me to do and get it to where you can see it. But I lay my scissors directly on my o ring. See that? Directly on the o ring and 90 degrees to my juice flow channels. See? And that's where I trim it. Just like that. Same on the other side. And there we have our wick. I tend to do one side to completion before I do the other side. Then we take our tiniest micro screwdriver. For me, that's this one right here. And we lift, fold, and tuck. And the goal here is to get it into the well, this area right here. We may take a time or two doing this on camera to get it down in there. There we go. We just tuck it down in there. One of the main questions I get is how far down in there do I need to go? And you can see through your juice flow hole there, you can, from your vantage point, you can just barely see the cotton, but you can still see, see right there is the top edge of the bottom of the juice well. And I like to get my cotton just over it. Not so that it's down in the juice flow channels, but just up to the bottom of the deck. Or at the bottom of the juice well. See? And you can still see a tiny little bit of the deck through there. I call that good. Repeat on the other side. Now you notice since my negative lead goes over, I didn't have to, f I didn't have to fight to get my wick around that negative lead. It's already underneath it, so you just tuck your wick right in. I didn't have to fight it. Same goes for this side. My wick might need to come there just a little bit there just up to it but you can still see the bottom edge of the drip well or I guess the juice well in this case on to the next side same as the last feel free to fast forward because this is just going to be a repeat Oh look, a low battery indication. 
I guess 35 minutes of video will do that to a cell phone battery. It shouldn't take you 35 minutes to build this. Unless you're doing it under lights, on camera, then maybe so. And this side's a little thicker. See my negative is over. I don't have to fight it. It just slides right in. And we pull it through. Not too tight, not too loose. Trims it off. Trims it off. Make sure we're still centered. Lift and stuff. Make sure it's down there, but not too far. The air has to be able to get out. You have to be able to get air around the wick and back out, back out of the the deck into the the tank section, so it can let more juice down. If it's wicked too tight or stuffed too full, you may not be able to get enough air back into the tank to replace the juice that's being wicked out. In there. And today I'm going to be using some Lost Coasty liquid, which is a very nice fruity blend of melon, strawberry, and hibiscus, which is just as much fun to say it is to vape. And at this point I prime my cotton. I do enjoy a good needle tip unicorn bottle. They do make filling much easier. And when I prime my wick, I tend to do it from the outsides of the wick because I want that wick to absorb the juice through the core of the wick. So this part tends to take me the longer than actually building. because I just juice from one side until it wicks over. Once I see it starting to get wet on the other side, down here, I know it's wicked through the wick. So I know the core of the wick is saturated. Mm-hmm. 
Wicking from the outside in just like it would under normal operating conditions. Flip it around, give it some load from the other end. And now that we're primed, we get to see pretty vapors. Bump it a couple of times, give it a couple of drops right across, and we're good. Any last minute fine tuning that needs to happen, go ahead and take care of that now. We just bump that side a little bit. First part to be reinstalled is our chimney sleeve. Thread that right on. And this, with the chimney in three different pieces, it lets us see our build at every stage. Every time we put a new part on, we can check the build to make sure something weird hasn't happened, the wick hasn't been pulled out of the coil, or nothing's touching where it shouldn't be, stuff like that. One-piece chimneys, or two-piece chimneys with the, uh, the enclosed the enclosed chimney section in a tube, or a one-piece chimney tube and everything. You can't, once you put that on, you can't see if your build's good. So, I like this method because it lets you check to make sure at every stage that your build is still good and you can still see you know all the way around that nothing's touching nothing's grounded good for you guys that are going to try to stuff this thing with the most massive wicks you can get in there chimney tube at this point I set my glass on my top cap because it's really hard to hold that o-ring in that top cap while you're screwing it on and I found that if I hold the cap on the glass it holds the o-ring in we screw our tank together I'm gonna take it off my mod to finish tightening it. Since these O-rings are dry, you don't need to go Hulk on this thing. You know, just snug it. It is glass. I mean, that might have been what quarter turn. I mean, you'll be able to tell. Tight's tight. Don't go ham on it. Just tighten it up, and you're good. Filling. Filling is a simple matter, but it can go crazy on you in a hurry. So I'm going to grab a napkin and I'm going to sit it underneath my dripper just to be on the safe side. We're going to take our fill screw out. The fill screw is the same exact screw as a post hole screw. So FYI, I'm going to take our unicorn bottle. I'm going to stick it right into our fill hole. And we're going to tilt away from our juice flow and to the side to get that juice to run. See the direction it's running? That's what we want. We want it to run away from our juice flow hole on filling. That way it's not trying to fill through the juice flow and out the drip top or mouthpiece or whatever you want to call it. And we just squeeze a bunch of juice in there. This is a 70-30 juice, so it's going to fill pretty easily. The thicker the juice, the harder it is to squeeze it in there. But that's to be expected. And it's going to hold everything I had left in this bottle. 
That'll be good for demonstration purposes anyway. We take our fill screw and set it back on our fill hole. Screw it back together. And you can get this screw snug. I found with the prototypes, I didn't really need a O-ring underneath that screw. I tried one with it. I ran it for months without it and didn't notice any difference. Put our top cap back on there, tighten our contacts. And there we have it. Bubbles are good. Too many bubbles, not so much. You don't want it to overfeed, but you don't want it to not feed at all either. So the fact that we can see bubbles means that we've got enough space around our wick to let the air out. And it's going to feed. You will notice in use that you'll get some condensation on your top cap. Which is what that's what that is condensation, not so much leaking, although it could it could be leaking if you tip to take a vape and you're looking at your airflow, you're tipping your entire chamber towards the airflow. So if there's an excessive amount of juice in the juice chamber or juice well, you're basically tipping that towards the airflow, and it will run out your airflow hole. If you keep your mod so that you're oriented facing your juice flow then you, you'll be tipping your juice chamber or your juice well towards your wicks. So don't forget your wicks are directly in line with your juice flow channels. So if you tip your whole entire juice chamber towards your wick holes or towards your wicks the juice is going to run towards the wicks and not out your airflow holes. And you won't wear ju juice. You'll notice that the older your build gets, if you're like me and you leave a build in for two or three months and run a couple hundred mils through it, that you'll start to get more leaking. And I suspect that's due to, to the fact that your wicks are just getting old. Um, they can't sustain the volume of, of liquid that you're trying to, you're asking them to hold and they flow easier. And I can't back that up with any sort of science. I'm just spitballing in the wind. It makes logical sense to me, so that's what I'm going with. Um, but there it is. That's how I build everything I vape. From 30 millimeter drippers, to 22 millimeter drippers, to tanks. When I make single coils, dual coils, That's how I do it. So, appreciate you guys for those soldiers out there that have stuck with me for 50 minutes and watched and listened to me ramble on and build this thing. That vapes for you. I do so appreciate it. And you can get a glimpse right there of why there might be some condensation on your top cap is because, well, when you run a hot build in here, it tends to give you that free second hit. So, don't be surprised if there's some condensation on your top cap or in your five on your 510. But there it is, the tank, Boscachua, with the build, Boscachua. That's how I do it. Like I said, to each their own. But <clears throat> hopefully, you got some tips out of that. It might help you out a little bit. And if not, then Go head on with your bad self. So you guys vape on, vape easy, be happy. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I hope everybody has an awesome Christmas. And a happy, happy new year. This is Scotchua out.